Well, um, I think all of us have probably had to talk to uh, uh, people who have come and, and uh, talked about some, some moral failure on the part of some high-profile minister because, unfortunately, uh, in every circle it happens, and in our circles it happens too. I usually say, I start this way, I said, don't start to get uh, disillusioned about leadership or institutions or even the church. Uh, get the solution about human nature, uh, yeah. and you're a human being too. In other words, don't say, that's for those leaders. No, that's those humans, and you're a human too. And see what you're capable of. So the first thing you should do is look to yourself and let it humble you. I would say the second thing is, yes, be careful about idolatry of Christian leaders. Uh, we tend to swing back and forth between um, a kind of idolatry uh, uh, almost, you know, being too adulatory towards somebody who is your hero, your spiritual hero, too much. And then if the person messes up, then moving back and saying, see, they're all a bunch of frauds, when actually there needs to be, you know, neither cynicism nor idealism. But especially when somebody falls, you ought to look at your own heart. I th there's a John Newton letter somewhere on that where he does that. <laughs> and he says, look at your own heart. You're made of the same stuff. It's human nature. It's not just it's not that pastors are all frauds, but human beings uh, are capable of this. It's on the front of human beings uh, being capable of this. Uh, I, in more recent days, I've sometimes tried to show that very fine human beings became responsible for Auschwitz. And we are no different from those human beings and no different from ISIS fighters in principle. So that although we as Christians should always be horrified by sin, especially our own, we should never be surprised by it. Um, and and uh, uh, that's a, a negative approach to begin with, but it, it, it just has to be said again and again and again. We have such light assessments in our culture about uh, mm -hmm. human evil that, um, that, that, that that has to be combated. But, but, but I also think that if we are thinking not only at the human level, but at the church level, um, it's a great time to help a church through um, biblical understanding, biblical fidelity when it comes to the nature and practice of church discipline. Uh, to be able to discipline with outrage over the sin and tears o over the fallen mm -hmm. and... and uh, seeing the multiple goals of church discipline and why Christ wants a pure church and all the rest. I mean, it's, 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 it's for the instruction of the church. You can mm -hmm. see God's hand of goodness even in all the evil in these things too. Yeah, that's, it's important to say that. Uh, that's the hope factor for, for people who feel like there may be no future for their yes, church. Yes. Um, day before yesterday, I was reading Psalm 105 and, uh, rehearses the history of Israel, and it says God summoned a famine on the land, and he had sent Joseph. Yes, yes. So how did he send him? He's a slave. He sent him through sin. If Joseph might not have felt sent he didn't for feel most sent. of those years. <laughs> he didn't feel sent any more than this church right now feels blessed yeah. or sent. And, and so you got a famine, which is calamity, and you've got sold into slavery, which is corruption. And those two things is what a church feels. Like yes. a calamity has happened. Yes. This is a calamity. And it's, it's ugly, it's corrupt, it's sinful, yuck. So if you, if you read that text, God's in charge of both of them. And he's saving his people. He's bringing a Messiah into the world. So those are the kinds of passages, I think, that mm -hmm. I'm going to take a church there and say, right now, this just feels like calamity and corruption. It's not only calamity and corruption. Right. Get the big picture. So, right. so exper experientially, that, that 1993 thing at Bethlehem, we lost 230 people over a moral failure of one of our staff. We, we didn't grow for f four years, flat. And I would say to a church, be patient. Accept the discipline. God is spanking you. He is. It's, it's, a, it's a Hebrews 12 spanking. Everybody in the church is implicated. We, we just tried to humble ourselves right. right under the mighty hand of right. God saying, 
if you would be pleased, bring us out of this, but we're in no hurry to escape your hand of discipline. Let it have its full purifying effect upon us. So, so patience and hope. That uh, psalm is nicely summarized in Genesis 50, 19 and 20. Yes. You, you intended it for evil, but God intended it for good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, Would you agree that, that you could, you could put, write that as a banner over Everything Scats, Satan Scats does. Yeah, Everything right. Satan does. Yeah, that's right. That's Satan meant it for evil. God meant it for good. 